With today's gospel, there's a few things that I could be preaching on. I could be preaching on um, Thomas, who was a doubting Thomas, who had to see Jesus to believe that he was risen because he didn't see him the first time. I could also be preaching about the sacrament of uh, confession because Jesus is giving his apostles the uh, uh, mandate or the uh, mission to forgive sins. I could also be talking this weekend in, uh, about uh, the, the Feast of the Divine Mercy. But I'll be talking about something completely different. And so that technically I can consider that a homily, I'll base myself on the fact that the apostles, when they saw Jesus, Thomas was not with them. They testified to Thomas that Jesus, they had seen Jesus. They shared with Thomas the good news. And so there's a good news, a great project that we have in the diocese and in terms of evangelization. And I'll be basing myself on that to consider that a homily and not just a presentation or a sermon. So I'm sharing with you something interesting, some good news, like the apostles shared with Thomas their good news of seeing the risen Jesus. Those who have uh, read the bulletin already probably have an idea of what I'm about to talk. It's uh, presented in the second page of the bulletin. Those who have seen it uh, on Facebook or through Flocknote or whatever, I'll be talking about this initiative that's called Blessed Catherine's Star Flowers. And it is in the line of what we are doing for evangelization. It makes a few months, so over a year, that I talk to you about evangelization and this project of the bishop to have evangelization in the diocese. And uh, in any enterprise, in any projects that we do in the church, if we want a project to be successful, to bear fruits, we first need to pray. Prayer has to be at the cornerstone of everything that we do in the church. That's why we see sometimes projects falling apart because prayer was not the uh, uh, thing on which rest everything else. In terms of prayer, we, we have the prayer for evangelization that uh, I've read for many occasions on Sundays. Uh, I should start doing it again soon, but we have that prayer and you've received copies of that prayer. That some copies were distributed at one point or another. But on top of that, we have uh, decided to initiate a fellowship of prayer. Thinking especially of some people who at first sight or at first glance might not think of themselves as being part of the evangelization project. We've been thinking of the people who are shut-ins or who are suffering of different kinds of illness, people who have difficulty taking charge of groups or taking charge of special things. And we've thought about them and the value that they have for us in the church. It is we say it on and on again that it is of great value to associate our sufferings, our pains, our trials, our difficulties with Jesus on the cross. They have a redeeming power. And so we have uh, looked at one person in the history of the Catholic Church in Canada in New France, who was in a situation where she was not always able to work. She was sick many times. She had to offer her suffering. She was offering her sufferings for the good of the nation, 
for the good of this new country that was building up. And that person is Blessed Catherine de Saint-Augustin. Blessed Catherine is a woman that was born in France in 1632. And by the age of 16 years old, she was already a nun and she had volunteered herself to come to this new country of New France, building hospitals, building schools and stuff like that in, in this new country. And Blessed Catherine offered herself to come to Canada. At the age of 15 and at the age of 16, she was granted that permission. And on their way here, on the boat, for three months, there was great affliction with illness. Plague had attacked the people on the ship. Even the captain died of plague. Catherine herself was affected by plague. But in a miraculous way, she came out of it. And as she arrived in Quebec City, she was at Hotel Dieu Hospital where the community was organizing for the help, to help the, the cure the people, to help with the people who were sick. And so that's where she ministered. That's where she acted, where, where she was doing work for the, the poor and the needy. But as I was saying, very often she was not able to work because she was bedridden. She was afflicted by illness. And instead of just pitying herself and thinking that it was terrible, she decided to offer that to the Lord, to offer her suffering to Jesus on the cross, to associate them with Jesus on the cross. And she died. So she was born in 1632. She died, she was, uh, let me see, 36, I think something like that, in 1668. This one doesn't say her age of death, but it's, and I'm not quick enough in math this evening, 36 I think she was, or something around there. And although she's always been working in Quebec City, and many, always working from the monastery and from the hospital where she, her community was working, although many years she was not working in the term of taking care of the sick and the poor and all of that. And she was just sick herself. She's been considered a co-founder of Canada. Her work, her ministry, her implication, and the sufferings that she offered were considered valuable for the good of the country. So it is by that inspiration that we have decided to get her, use her or invoke her as a saint. She's a blessed, as a, a patron for this enterprise of our fellowship of prayer. And the idea of the star flower stems from probably more the other part of the country, of the diocese, the Ottawa Valley. I, I'm not a, an outdoors guy, so maybe it is the case here too. You can tell me after Mass and I'll be able to correct my speech for tomorrow. But down in the other part of the diocese, star flowers are very common. And they're spreading all over the forests. And the idea of using that image, because the star flowers has seven petals, we could represent the seven days of the week with that flower. That's where the name comes from. And so we've decided to organize that fellowship of prayer, where people 
who stay at home, people who are shut in, people who are experiencing sufferings. First and foremost, those people and any other people who want to offer their lives can join in into that fellowship of prayer. We've made some little booklets with prayers, with uh, different messages, with intentions, with litanies of saints and stuff like that. Wonderful little booklets. And, and every month there will be also a mass offered for the people who are part of that community of prayer, that fellowship of prayer. And so these little booklets have come out last week or Holy Week. So that's why I never talked about it much before because we were still in the waiting of some materials. So if you know it, that's where the link to the gospel. I know you're all here at church. Some of you have some health issues and stuff that you could want to offer in, in prayer to this project. But many of you know other people who are not here because of those situations. And I invite you to spread the word. And if any one of them, any one of you, want to become part of that community of prayer, of that fellowship of prayer, just contact me and I'll organize to meet you and to transmit, give you the booklet and guide you in this project. On top of the booklet, we even got a medal, specially cast for this project. The design of the medal was done by our bishop. He's a little bit, he's a little bit of an artist, so he's the one who designed the, the medal, and uh, we got it uh, ca uh, cast is the word, eh? Yeah, we got it cast. We got it in Italy, and it's all it's all beautiful. What's what's more beautiful is more than these material things is the the the, the prayers and the offerings of those prayers and the offerings of our lives that will be presented through these uh, tools by the intercession of Blessed Catherine for the project of the evangelization of our diocese. So I really encourage you to spread the word, to think about it, maybe for yourselves, and to get in touch with me if you want to know more and uh, maybe perhaps join that fellowship.